here, we never unplug, huh? S work, show some love. Yeah. Social works, social works, social works, social, social works, social works, social works. Social works, 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 yeah, yeah, S works, S works, everyone put in their hands, you know it's a vibe, they're waiting in line to get up and flood up the stands, yeah, we in this together, we feeling like fam, it's all about peace, so pull up with friends, you better come through with you and your crew, cause everybody going in. S works, so we keep it lit. You can see how we move the city from the west side to the east. Ooh, you can feel it how we leave through. It's all about the youth. Uh, change the world through the tunes. Uh, make the world to a better place. And S works, what we do. Eh. Social works, work. social works, work. social works, work. social. Organization, we stopping no Satan and open my we call it Swerks. Action on a tailor, the killer verse. I do on my phone, my city hurt. They killing our babies, it's work going crazy. I pray for my city to reimburse. Running schools for the kiddies. Where the city at, we lady. All I know is it's work. With the heart, keep it busy. Know the life, keep it tricky. But please just let me finish. Let me just be a witness. At Swerks, handle bitch. Social works. Now here we come, south side, west side, east side, north side, up on the run, we ain't for the none, we came in the party, we in for the fun, to celebrate life, the party we young, tell you the limit, we looking above, we up in the sun, no matter what, we stay on the run, ha, ass work, do your thing, ass work, keep it lit, bulls out, keep your aim, yeah, yeah, we up on the jab, uh, north side, that's the way, uh, ready to get now here we come, uh, ass work, keep the energy, look, yeah, we never unplug, uh, ass work, show some love, yeah. social works, social Social works, 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 yeah, yeah, S works, S works, everyone put in their hands, you know it's a vibe, they're waiting in line to get up and flood up the stairs, yeah, we in this together. Workshops are a series of online workshops featuring the many incredibly talented friends of social works. This series aims to inspire and educate, bringing local and national creatives live to your smartphone. They will be sharing and teaching specific aspects of their craft. A wide variety of professions, interests, and hobbies are represented within our curriculum. Did we mention it's a fundraiser too? The stay at home notice has students wondering what's to come. For some, graduation and prom will both be canceled. This campaign will directly fundraise a celebration event for those students within the Chicagoland area. Once it's safe, of course. Tune in to any of our socials for one or all of the workshops. You can find the full schedule of programming at socialworkshy.org or on our Instagram. Classes start Monday, April 13th. We'll see you there. It's me, Megan, and I'm from Lil Epic Design. And thank you for joining me on my workshop. 
with paper folded art. So um, paper folded art, today we're going to be making some uh, really fun versions of origami that I make. So one of them is going to be a paper folded heart that we can turn into a card and I'll talk about that more later. And then we are going to be making um, a paper folded dinosaur. So these two uh, origami pieces are things that you can choose to make one or the other. You can do both. All you really have to do is just have two sheets of paper. Um, you don't really need a lot of supplies for this. All you're really going to be working with is a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So standard paper, any ruled paper or um, like notebook paper, all of that will be fine. And then you don't even really need scissors for this, but if you really wanted to, you can have a glue gun or a glue stick nearby and you can kind of like glue these pieces down so that they're nice and secure but you don't have to. Um, we are going to be cutting paper, but I'm going to be showing you how to do that without the use of scissors. And so all you really, really need um, for this class is a piece of, is at least one piece of paper or two if you want to. Um, and then we'll be able to talk more about how you would maybe want to customize or personalize your little dinosaur or your little heart. So we're going to be starting with the heart because this is going to be a little bit easier than the dinosaur. Um, I take that back, it's going to be like a lot easier <laughs> than the dinosaur. Um, but we're going to be learning some folds that you are going to be doing in the heart that are going to be super, super helpful for the dinosaur. So um, if everybody's ready, we can begin. Um, and don't uh, feel free to ask me questions during the sessions. I'm going to have your questions pulled up. So if you have any questions for me, just ask away. I'm totally here for it. Um, there's some questions here that I have popped up already. So uh, one of the questions is what paper is best for you and to you for this. And we can totally talk about that. Now, I'm using regular printer paper. You can use any like forms, that, like any old pieces of paper that you have. Um, old old you know uh magazine do people use magazines to, <laughs> magazine piece papers um again world paper notebook paper any paper will do and um you don't really need to go out and buy any supplies or you don't have to feel like you need specific supplies for origami or for a paper full of art it's just all you need is some standard piece of paper that you can fold in a size that you can turn into a square or it that is already a square. So we're going to be turning our eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper into a square. So how we're going to be doing that is we're going to be folding one of the corners, the top corners inwards. So it's going to look like this. And we used to call these sailboats. I don't know if they're still called sailboats. Uh, I remember my old my old grade school art teacher used to say that they were sailboats. So I'm going off of sailboats, but that was super long ago. So I don't know if that still applies. And we're going to just be making sure that the point is really nice and pointed. And so I'm sure a lot of you have done this in the past. Oh, good question. How long have I been doing origami? Um, I have been doing origami probably my whole life. My sister and I, we started this company, Little Epic Design, which is what where I'm from and we have we specialize in paper art and so origami folded art has been something that I've loved my entire life and it's been something that's super entertaining for me I've always been able to make something that uh, is really creative and imaginative from paper so I just really like to have a lot of artistic options so I hope you guys like origami too so we're making our little sale just like this okay so this is how we're going to get our square sheet of paper. As you can see, we have a little chunk of paper here that is left over. We're actually going to be getting rid of that. And in order to get rid of that or cut it off without the use of scissors, is we're actually going to be folding it backwards. So we're going to be taking this sheet of paper and we're going to be folding it back like this so that we're going to be creating a nice triangle shape this way. So you're going to fold it back and you're going to line it up with that sheet of paper. 
And you're just going to make sure it's a nice, clean fold. You don't want it to overlap or you don't want any um, paper seeding over um, through the back of your triangle. Um, I think we have one more. I think they already answered that question. If, if you don't have any supplies. Um, I used to be really creative with my supplies. I used to do... Um, I used to make little origami paper folded art pieces from newspapers, right? So newspapers, um, catalog, <laughs> books, those are still a thing. But you don't really have to have just like blank sheets of paper. You can use any paper you want and you can always like color over them or take a marker over them. And even if you just have a white piece of paper and you wanna make it more personalized, you can always just take a pen or a pencil or a marker or whatever you have on hand. I used to just use highlighters and just customize your paper so that you have like different types of textured paper and we can talk about that later. And so, so now we have our little fold here, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna go at over and fold the sheet of, or show, fold that rectangle paper in front of the square now. So we're gonna be going back and forth since so like bringing this forward and then bringing this back and we're gonna be constantly creating a crease. So what I mean by creating a crease is you're going to be taking your, your I would say my pointer finger and my thumb. And I always kind of just like squeeze, pinch the paper and take drag my thumbnail across to kind of create this like, uh, super tight fold. What you're really doing is, this is what I consider, I consider it stressing the paper out. So you're stressing the paper out, which is loosening the fibers, which makes it a lot easier for you to, um, to rip apart. Uh, where can you find instructions to do other folding art pieces? This is really good. I like doing this. You can always just go and Google origami. You can YouTube origami. Um, YouTube has a lot of great resources for people. Some of them don't have instructions. So you're really going to have to follow along with the visuals. Some people do have instructions, so it's kind of easier to see, you know, they're like this. They're going to be explaining how to do the folds and everything. But um, I would say YouTube is a really good resource for finding more uh instructions on doing more art pieces because there's so many that you can make this is we're just going to be making a heart and a dinosaur today but you could be making cranes birds dogs um boxes are really fun so you can really make anything out of paper i love it okay so we have our little fold here and you'll start noticing that this piece of paper is feeling really loose what you want to do is you're going to take one one hand so you're going to put one hand for stability on your triangle piece and then you're going to be taking your dominant hand well mine's my right and you're going to just lightly rip that paper along that seam that you had just created and i usually just drag my um my left hand down along the triangle to kind of keep the paper in place which makes it a lot easier for me to uh, rip and keep it nice and clean so now we have a little section right here and then when you do that, you have created a square without scissors. Congratulations. Okay, so now we're going to be making the heart. So we have in origami, everything's all about folds. So we have our first fold. So our fold is, we'll say it this way, is going along this diagonal here. What we wanna do is you want to create an X fold here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the top of our diagonal fold and the bottom of our diagonal fold and then we're going to create a fold up um, that way. So we're gonna be sandwiching these two pieces of paper together like this. And you wanna make sure it's nice and lined up. So how I usually do it is I'll uh, keep my fingers pinched here at the top and then I'll drag my finger, I'll drag my pointer finger and my thumb finger all the way down along that fold and then I'll kind of squeeze along the way to kind of make sure that the paper lines up and then I'll be a lot more careful um, at the points because I want the point to be really nice and sharp. And then I'll do that again on this side, just being really careful about the points. 
it's a little bit harder to get the um, <laughs> to get the heart shape when it's not super pointed. Okay. And then once you feel pretty confident about that, you're just going to go ahead and make that fold and do a nice little firm push on that fold. So then you can create the crease again using your nail. And now we have our X fold. Okay, great. So we have our X fold here. So now we're gonna just go and we're going to go all the way across once and we're just going to fold it in like this. Making a little bit of a sandwich. This one we're not going to be squeezing as tight. All right. Here we are. We'll just take a little pause so that everybody can catch up if they need to. Um, feel free to let me know if you have any questions about the fold or um, about how, any more questions that you have about supplies. What are the best beginner level origami to try out? Um, that's a question that we have. I would say the best beginner level origami to try out. I think this is probably a good one, the heart. Um, it's very straightforward. And then I would say another one would probably be like the really, the much more intricate star. The dog is also very easy. Um, I would try the heart, the dog, the frog is really fun to make. Um, and then the star is really, I mean, I think a lot of people have done a rendition of the star, but they have like a really nice, uh, I guess a cleaned up version of it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of any other ones, but I'm pretty sure those are good ones to do. Um, what is the most complicated piece I've done? Um, <laughs> the most complicated origami piece I've done um, the house is pretty complicated because you're just taking like a, a little, you're taking so many folds and you have to make so many versions of the fold. Um, a house that kind of like stands on its own. Um, the, I think it's like a lizard or something, like the lizard or the dragon one is really complicated. I don't know if I've ever finished that one. <laughs> Sometimes you're just like, I need to try, try. Um, you get really close, but you're like, oh my God, I don't, I don't know how like how far I can go along with this it's there's a lot of teeny tiny folds with origami pieces that have like the dragon in it and you're kind of like my goodness um okay so we are here okay so let's turn our square square into a dying a diamond shape so we're gonna go with our um, top piece of our diamond and we're going to take this point and we're going to fold it midway so we're only gonna fold it until the center point, until the center point, sorry guys, here we go. Until the center point meets this, meets that center, I would say, meets the center of our diamond. So that where all the, um, where all the folds meet together. So we'll call that center, um, center point. So the top point meets the center point. And I'll show you what that looks like. Right now, so it'll look just like that. I'm gonna make this nice and tight. This fold to be pretty secure here. After that, we kind of create like a gemstone shape. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So now, what you want to do is you want to take your bottom, your bottom piece here, your bottom point, and you're going to lift that one all the way up past your center point, and we're going to reach all the way to the top with that one. So it's going to look pretty much like this when you fold it, when you, when you fold it down. Okay. And you want to line that up. You want to make sure that these are nice and centered just so that it's a lot easier for you later on um, 
you're not going to be worried about having to realign anything or having to refold because creating creases in the paper and then having to create more creases on the paper it kind of makes it um it's a little bit more complicated okay so the way you want to do it is you want to make sure that there is no piece of paper that there's that point is not sticking up or there is no uh that little um, triangle point is not above that straight line here. So it's gonna be nice and level. Okay, so now that we're here, we have a big chunk here and we have a little chunk here. We're actually going to be, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna start on my right side. We're actually going to be folding this upwards. So we're gonna be creating like a little wing upwards. Um, I have a little, I have a question I forgot to answer, so I'll just take a little, I'll have everybody catch up and then I'll kind of just answer the question too. I fold all the time, but now I have so many pieces. What do I do with all of them? Oh, okay. So you must be doing a lot of art pieces, a lot of like um, folded art. That's awesome. I'm so glad that you're doing that. Um, when, right now, ways that you can, you know, utilize them or feel productive with them is giving them away and i really want to talk to you guys about um about this later and which is another reason why i wanted to make this heart is because you can really make people smile with a very little items or very few you know supplies you can always make somebody feel better and i feel like it during this time especially with people feeling a little bit more anxious or there's a lot of unknown going on um having some of these like paper crafts that you make and giving them to like your parents or giving them to like your family members or your, your friends or even like the people who you see who are like, you know, frontliners, like, you know, people at the grocery store or even like your male person, like being able to give them something like this as a gift, I feel like is really nice. So I would probably give them, I would probably, at least a few of them you could give out as gifts right now. Um, so we're going to go back here. So we're going to be taking this portion, this corner here, and we're going to be flipping, um, raising this flap up, upwards. And we're going to be lining it up with the center fold. Just like that. I'll move my hand so you can see it. So it's going to look just like that. So you just want to make sure that it's nice and lined up to that center Crease, that center line there and then you squeeze it down like that okay so we're gonna be doing that just like that so this is what we created here's that fold again and it goes upwards like that and then now we're gonna be doing the same thing on the other side so again we're just gonna be raising that corner up making sure that there's a nice point here on the bottom um, so you want to make sure that when you're folding it, you create it, you make sure that it's your fold is really nice and straight. So you have a nice clean point down here. And then we're just going to be squeezing the paper down again until we make we like that how I, we like how it's lined up. And then we're going to push that down. Okay. So now we're here. Okay, nice. So this looks like a heart already. It's really close, but I think we wanna make it look a little bit more curved or rounded on the top and then also on the side. So what we'll do now is we're going to turn your heart around. So this is the back side. So we're gonna be looking at um, the side that has, yeah, this, we're gonna be looking at this side, this side. And what we'll be doing is we're gonna be Pushing the, we're going to be folding the top points. So this top point, we're going to be folding it inwards and we're just going to line that up with where the second piece of paper starts. So we're not going to be going all the way down. We're just going to be lining it up where that paper, that folded piece of paper begins. Just like that. Yeah, so you can see that it's just folded right where that paper starts. And then we're going to be doing this again on the other side.
So we're going to have it look like that. You want to make these nice and you want to make sure that you pinch these down really well so that they stay in place. And then again, if you have a glue stick later on, you can totally glue these down if you want to, but you don't really necessarily have to if you fold it well good enough. So now we have this shape. And it looks like a heart, it really does, but I think we, we want to make sure that these corners here are a little bit rounded too. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking, um, we're going to be taking this point and right where you see, let me see if it's better this way, right where you see a fold, there's a, um, there's like a little crease here. You're just going to line up your second, you're, you're going to line up this fold with that one. So you just kind of create a straight line with your fold and you make a little mini triangle on the corner there just like that yeah and then you're going to do that again on the other side so you want to line it up just like that okay Another thing that would be really cute is if you made these for a lot of your classmates. I know there's a lot of seniors out there that aren't able to um, enjoy their prom or their graduation. So it's really cute. In or it would be really cute if you have their addresses. You can send them well wishes while you guys are all kind of like shelter in place right now. And then you know, or you know, you can also make these for uh, anybody's birthdays or whatever. So, so this is what our heart looks like, and we're pretty much done. So we have. Our rounded ends, ooh, this is better. We have our rounded ends, and also we have this piece here that opens up. So, I really wanted to talk about really quickly how you can create this heart and make this your own. So, what I did in my practice heart is I actually just took a highlighter and I started just um, personalizing it. And so, you don't really need a lot of crayons, you don't need an you don't need a lot of like uh, supplies for this. You don't need paint. You could just use a pen. I was using a highlighter. I tend to just use like one thing, like a pencil or a pen or a highlighter or a marker, just like one, right? Because I like the challenge of being able to create something with only one color, one option, and then making variations off of that. So um, it's something that I do. It's something that I like got used to growing up because I didn't really, you know, I just didn't have too many cool markers and stuff so I had to be really creative with what I had so um, it was pieces of paper and it was pens so I would make these little hearts and so you can totally customize these and make them your own and then going off of how you can make these for like your friends or for like your fellow graduates and stuff you know in the inside you have this perfect little diamond and you folded that diamond you're like already it's already in every single heart that you have so what I just did was I took a marker or a highlighter really, and I just uh, traced along that diamond and then I wrote a little note inside. So again, if you wanna give these to anybody, your mom for Mother's Day, you can make a whole bunch, tape them to like, a, you know, chopsticks or any old pens that don't work anymore. You can create a little like heart bouquet for her and um, put little nice messages inside of them and give them to her uh, for Mother's Day. Or, or, you know, you can give it to your grandmother, you can give them to your favorite auntie, you can give them to like whomever, but you can make a bouquet with just a few pieces of paper, some pens that probably don't work anymore, some tape, and your imagination. So I like to, I think there's a lot of options here and it's a really sweet gift that you can give to people. So, so you guys, we made a heart. So look at that. Good job, everyone. Let me know if you have any questions about um, about this or if you uh, want to see anything again, any folds uh, that you missed or whatever. Um, we can totally uh, we can totally uh, check, uh, go back on those a little bit. So in the interest of time, I think we can start moving on to our dinosaur. So let's just remember what the dinosaur looks like. <laughs> this is our dinosaur and he's really he's a 3d paper model and I did the dinosaur in orange because this one's gonna require um, some more folds that might be a little bit harder to see so it's easier to see it in colored paper um, and so it's this is really this dinosaur is really fun to make 
because it can stand. You can turn it, um, you can make it into like a little like desk decoration. You can give it to friends. You can, you know, customize them and turn them into toys. So whatever you want to do with your dino, it's totally cool. I like to have them around. They kind of have been hanging out on my desk back here with all the practice ones that I've been making. So um, we are going to be making dino now. So if this is your second sheet of paper, go ahead and take out your second sheet of paper. Um, one question that came up right now is what other types of art do you make? That's like a really, that's a really good question. Um, so I don't do origami per se all the time. <laughs> I do like a variation of origami. My sister and I make paper flowers. So we make, um, we make these big art pieces, these walls, really, these eight feet by eight feet walls made out of paper flowers. So I still have my, um, my life is still encompassed by paper, if you will, but it's not so much little dinosaurs. It's generally like big paper flower walls. And it's really fun for me because I can make them into, I can make these like beautiful flowers that I love. I love flowers actually. Um, and I think that they're such a beautiful piece of nature, but I can kind of customize them to crazy colors, crazy shapes, um, make them super, super big. So I really like to be able to take something beautiful from nature and, um, and just expand upon it with my imagination, right? Uh, another question that came up is, how did you start Lilepa Design and what services do you offer? Okay, so my sister and I started Lilepa Design in 2014. I had just finished college and, um, and she was already working in the arts field. She's definitely the one who went full in on the arts. So she decided one day that she was going to be making paper flowers for a workshop uh, and she was gonna be teaching them at the store called Paper Source. I don't know if there's tons around, but it's definitely still around. And so she's making these itty bitty paper flowers and then she realized that she can make them bigger. So me and her growing up, we used to do all these little origami pieces and you know make a lot of things out of paper. So we took it upon ourselves to create bigger flowers just for fun, you know, and then what ended up happening is somebody found out that we did it and wanted to make a paper flower wall. So she wanted us to make a whole ton so she can take pictures in front of it. And then it turned into a backdrop, which then turned into us being more integrated in the events world and creating different types of backdrops based off of like our imagination and like our skills and you know trying to learn how to build new things. And then it turned into uh, event planning and then event coordination and then we got into we started doing like real flowers and all that stuff so we re really what started with a piece of paper really ended up becoming a full service event design company and it's kind of crazy but you know it just you never know where it's gonna begin <laughs> um, and then last question before I start the dyno is what kind of markers bleed through paper the least? Okay, that is a super solid question. Um, I would say permanent markers are probably a no-go. Uh, and you know, they're, they're really smelly, number one, but they bleed through pretty much everything. Um, I like highlighters because they don't, they typically don't, and you can get a lot of like highlighters now that have a lot of different colors. Um, even certain pens, like even certain, um, like uh, there's like these, uh, how do I, there, oh, these types of pens, these micron pens, they bleed through stuff. They're kind of like marker pens, if you will. They're not quite gel pens, but they're pens that are, you know, colored and they're really saturated. Those bleed really, they, those, those bleed a lot. So what I would probably recommend is getting any highlighter. And then if you really wanted to go and have more like fun colors or more pastel colors, or if you're really thinking about investing in your uh, stationary game, right? <laughs> then I would consider purchasing these highlighters and they're called midliners. Um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I really like these midliners. You can get them on Amazon. They do take a while to come in because I think they're from Japan, but 
they have a lot, a lot of different colors. And it'll feel like you have a marker, but you'll have so many more options and they won't bleed through paper. So that's kind of why I really like them. So let's start the, the dinosaur. So we already have our eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be turning this into a square again. So like before, we're going to be folding our sheet of paper into a little sailboat. And then we're going to be cutting off this bottom piece again. So let's try and do that a little bit faster than before. And even me, I've been doing folds. I've been pretty much <laughs> been in the paper world as a hobby and also professionally. <laughs> um, almost my whole life. I, I even have a hard time making perfect folds still. So if you ever feel like you're not really good at it, just keep practicing and you can always make adjustments too. So nice crease here using my finger to pinch it down. And then we're going to be flipping this back yet again. Um, another way to customize your dinosaurs and your hearts is to be is to color your paper beforehand before you even do any of this. So another way that I like to customize my sheets of paper, and I used to do this a lot when I was a kid, is I used to color on my sheet of paper before folding it. So I have like a really cool design on my animal or on my heart or whatever that I was building um, at the end result. So it kind of would look like this. I colored the piece of paper completely with like any design that I had um, with that marker that with that highlighter that I showed you and then I did the cut what we're doing now and then I folded it into our little into my little dinosaur and it looked kind of I think it looks kind of cool so that's another way that you can customize your art or your pieces of paper before um, before or even after you finish folding so again, I'm going to do this. Let's just do one more for good luck. And then we're going to rip it. And the more you do it, the better you will get at this, trust me. And it's a nice way to, I'm not good at cutting uh, with scissors in a straight line. So this is kind of the best way for me to do this. <laughs> Honestly, even with scissors around. Okay. So now we have our square with a diagonal. We're going to be doing the same fold that we started out with. We're going to go all the way. We're going to take this point and we're going to take this point and we're just going to sandwich those together and we're going to create a fold going across. So we're going to make an X fold. Uh, when, oh, I got, sorry, I missed the question. How can I order, actually, I think, what's the best, how can I order your paper flowers? Oh, okay, let's start there. Um, you can, so we do, or, actually, it's a really good question right now, because in May, we always make paper flower bouquets for Mother's Day. We just really like, um, really like being able to give a gift of flowers that doesn't die, right? So on our website, we'll be having a promo for paper flowers, and you can buy bouquets. And we usually do them as bouquets because they're really nice together. You get a variety of flowers, and then you know it's you have this like centerpiece that you can put on your table or on your desk or whatever, or you can give it to your um, your loved one. And it's a full look that you know you don't ever have to maintain, or you know these are flowers that don't die. So. Um, you don't really do individual pieces so much. We'll do mini bouquets and we'll do bigger bouquets, but those are, we'll have a link to our website of where you can buy flowers. And then um, another question is, what's the best way to ship an origami piece? Okay, that's a good question. Um, best thing about origami is that it's all folded pieces of paper. So um, what you can really do, and we'll just talk about this really quickly, is 
you know, you don't really have, even though our dyno, for example, is 3D, mm-hmm. it's a better way to see it, you can always just refold them and have them go flat. So you never have to really worry about maintaining your shape with paper, especially with origami. You can always refold it and, and then you can have it just pop up again. Things with the, like if you have a box, for example, if you're building a box or if you're building a origami piece that's a little bit more intricate, then you might want to decide to get like a ship, like a FedEx box or something like that. But if you're going to be making, if you're going to be sending, you know, a bunch of little dinosaurs, you know, a bunch of hearts, or if you're going to be making the crane, for example, even the frog, the grasshopper, all of those can be refolded and laid flat. So you don't have to worry about um, having to get a, a specific envelope for them. You can, or a kind of a, or like a box for them. You can ship a whole bunch and they'll lay flat. And then when the person opens it up again and they receive your mail, they can just open it and it'll, you know, pop up and be 3D again. So that's the nice thing about origami. It ships really well. Okay. Let's go into uh, another fold before I answer another question, just because I want us to catch up with time. Uh, so now that we have our X fold, we're going to be going and creating our half fold just like this. So we're going to just go, we're going to make the little sandwich and go right in half. Okay, line it up. So for this one, like the heart, you want to make sure your paper lines up really well. Accuracy is going to be very important for our dinosaur. Okay, make a nice fold here. Make sure to use your nail to really create that crease. And then we want to open it up back up. We want to open our piece of paper back up. And we're going to do one more final fold, the opposite side of the paper. So you notice that we have our, our fold going up and down. We want to make sure that we have our fold going horizontal. And you, I know uh, I've tried it in the past, just kind of like doing, the, doing another fold, but doing a shortcut fold from... Um, like where we were at the previous step, but it doesn't create the proper crease that we need. So you really, you really don't want to take any shortcuts with, uh, with our dinosaur. <laughs> well, not with our dinosaur, but with maybe an origami. Origami, there's like these folds are all intentional. There, that's one thing about origami that I really do appreciate is all the folds that are here are not unnecessary. Everything, every move you make in origami is intentional for the outcome, and it's very like. It's very like uh, holistic and really um, it's kind of like a lifestyle. <laughs> you know, you make sure that you're making really executed choices. It's great. Okay, so um, one one question that I can answer pretty quickly, and I think I kind of alluded to this before, is when did you start doing origami? Um, I would say the probably the exact age I started doing origami had to have been when I was like six or seven, really, really early. Um, my sister is five years older than me, so she was really into it. And then since she was always around, I would get into it. So um, I had to have been probably just around six or seven when I first started doing origami and like very basic origami stuff and making origami mistakes. But I was really into the idea of being able to create um, to create characters or to create animals from pieces of paper. Um, one more question so that we can just like clear the queue would be what's the coolest project you've made for an event? Um, oh, wow, that's a good question. There is so many different ones. Each event is really different, so it's hard to choose which one's the best. I really, I mean, I, we made this crazy forest wall Mm -hmm. once and it was a bunch of like greenery and it was like super 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 huge it was like 20 feet long or something and then like 10 feet tall and there was all these like um wooden pieces going across it so it was just very geometric it was very uh it was just very organic it looked like a forest coming out of nowhere and it was just uh really a really sweet build i mean it's very different there wasn't any paper involved but the idea of it was just to create like this almost like this forest or like this forest looking backdrop in the middle of like a cityscape and just to kind of have that like super crazy opposite uh, juxtaposition, if you will, 
show up at, for an event, I thought that was really, really cool. It was a very hard build too. So the fact that we could even execute it, I was like, here we go. <laughs> Let's start with paper. Now we're here making like little mini florists and stuff. <laughs> okay, so now we're here. So this is going to be honestly probably one of the hardest folds that we're going to be doing. And it's hard mentally, it's not really hard physically. So we're gonna be doing our fold and it's gonna be tent shaped just like this. And we're gonna be taking these two corners here and we're actually gonna be pushing it inward. So we're actually gonna be almost like an accordion or a slinky or whatever. We're gonna push everything in just like this. And you're, at first you're gonna be like, this feels weird. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that these this center fold actually pops up like that. So you want these this center fold to pop up and the back fold to pop up too. And you want this these two pieces to come these two corners to come together. So it's gonna look like this. And you're gonna have to maneuver your paper quite a bit. There's no it's not really a graceful step, if you will. Even mine is a little bit. Sometimes you have to retrain the fold a little bit to give it some more direction. So here we go, I'm getting close. There, just like, so that's what I mean. It's like probably the, hard, the hardest fold, it's just because it doesn't really naturally, your paper naturally doesn't make this shape and it doesn't really create a star like this normally so you're gonna have you you have to like kind of push your paper into its position so what we're doing now is we're creating a diamond shape and now what we're going to do is we're actually just going to flatten the diamond and create a sandwich by moving our hands so this is where we're at now we're gonna move our hand this way and we're just going to push that piece down and then we're gonna do that same move at the back so it turns into a diamond sandwich, just like this. So now you have, this is a top, and then the open side, and you've just created this little diamond shape. It feels funky when you do it, but you know, that's, <laughs> it's really not that bad. Okay, so the next part that you wanna do is you're going to be taking these flaps so we have four flaps here okay we're gonna say one side is the front one side is the back and we're gonna work on the front first so we're gonna be saying that this side or whatever direction I'm facing you will be the front so we're gonna take these two flaps and we're actually going to be folding one piece over and we're gonna be making kind of like a, sh a kite shape so just like this a little bit harder to do this away from me but I'll show you what I need in a second. So just like that. You want to um, you want to make sure that it kind of looks like a, that you're like you're building a kite, really. Okay. So now we're just gonna push that side down, create that fold, and then we're gonna do that again on the other side. So we're gonna do this side now. And then I'm going to use my table for this just to line it up a little bit better. You don't have to do everything in the air. Please utilize as many tables or the surface that you have in front of you. I'm just trying to make sure that you guys can see everything. Um, also, if I'm going too fast, just let me know. Or if you need to read, if you need me to go over any other folds, just let me know too. So. Here we are, so this is our front fold. So now we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna do the same thing on the back side. So just like before, we're going to create that kite shape. And you definitely wanna make sure that they line up and that your points are really nice and clean. Just like that. Okay. So now we have the, the back side, the one that I just worked on, and then we have the front side. Okay. So now what we want to do is we're going to be taking this 
triangle here. We're going to be going through this triangle. We're going to be taking this triangle and we're actually going to be folding it forward and backwards. So we're going to be making it go forward and backwards to create a really nice crease there. So what we're going to do is you want to make sure that it lines up. So you don't want to fold over these little flaps that you had just created. You want to make sure that it really lines up nice and tight. So if you have to push your fingers along the um, along the edge or along that fold in order to keep everything nice and straight and lined up, you can do that. That's another way that I tend to make sure that my paper is folded really correctly. And then these, this crease, you really want to pinch down and apply a lot of pressure uh, so that it can fold over on the back side really easily. So there's a lot of paper in this fold, so it's not going to be an easy fold when you flip it over to the other side. Okay. So we have that fold this way. And so we're going to flip it over and we're going to bring it back the other way. So now... Here we are. Okay, just like that. All right, so now we're going, so we had done that, we did it on both sides. Now we're just gonna leave the triangle there for a little bit. Now what we're going to do is I'm gonna flip the view this way, or this way, okay, is we're gonna actually open up one of our sides. So we're gonna open up one side here and we're going to lift this piece up and we're going i'm going to flip it over this way so you guys can really see what i'm doing i'm holding on to that triangle piece there and i'm making sure that it stays really nice and flat and i'm going to be with my other hand i'm lifting the other side of the paper all the way until it reaches that triangle and i'm creating this shape after that follow along with me and I'm gonna be moving my hands this way. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be pushing those flaps inwards. So we're gonna be pushing those flaps inwards like that. Here we go. So it looks just like that. So again, what we did is we opened up our paper, we pushed, we kept our triangle down, we lifted our first our flaps all the way to the to that triangle and now we're going to be pushing our paper down just like this uh, we have a question if you mess up a fold how can you fix it without messing up the paper oh okay that's a really good question if you mess up a fold just reopen it up and then just kind of like push it down so that the paper doesn't like stay in that fold and then you can just refold it there's going to be a crease there but you don't have to, but it's not the end of the world. You don't have to throw that piece of paper away. Just try and smooth out that fold as much as possible so it looks really, really flat and then refold it in the direction that you want it to be and then really create that crease there. So you really wanna push your nail down or really put a lot of pressure and pinch it really, really nice and tightly um, so that you create a new fold. What you're doing really is you're just training your paper to do what you want it to do. Um, so you just have to, if you have to retrain it every now and then, it's, it's totally fine. Um, but don't feel like you have to start all over again because you know, usually you don't, you don't have to. Um, another question real quick, do I get a lot of paper cuts? <laughs> yes, I do get a lot of paper cuts. I do. I, 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 I'm just going to be honest with you. I totally do. <laughs> okay, so this is the shape that we had made once you push everything down. So we have our little triangle back here again, and then we push all of this forward, and now we have this shape here. We're gonna do that on the other side. So if we need to practice again, we can totally we can totally do that. So again, we're gonna open this up, our little kite shape. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna lift that whole flap of paper upwards. We're gonna push that triangle down, and then we're going to kind of sandwich these or squeeze these pieces of paper together, and then we're gonna fold it over like that. Okay, and then we're gonna just create a nice fold here and apply some pressure down, just like that. All right. Okay, so now we have this shape here, and then we have our two, our little triangle in the center. 
So now what we're going to do is we're just going to take this side that's like that that's facing you or the side that's facing me, and we're just going to flip that side down just for right now. And then we're going to change this direction, and we're going to go like this. And we, so we have a little triangle here, and then we have our two sides here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, just so you have a visual piece, I'm taking, we have uh, this one side, and then we have this triangle, and then we have the more paper on this side. We're going to be taking this one side, and we're going to be making our dinosaur neck and head. So now what you want to do is you're going to take your piece of paper, and you're going to turn it over. So the side that's facing me right now is the back side. We're gonna, you want the back to be facing you. So this is the front. You're going to look at the back, and the back looks like this. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to be taking this back side of your paper and you're going to be flipping it from, you're going to be folding this piece from the bottom here, this bottom side, and you're going to be lining it up with that center crease, just like that. Okay, and you're just going to fold, you're going to pinch that fold, let me just make sure that I'm straight, okay, and you're going to pinch that fold all the way up until you reach right in the center fold. There's a fold right here that you had made earlier. You don't want to fold it all the way up. You don't want to pinch all the way up. You just want to fold to about that center line right here. And we'll sh and that's because you're going to be creating a little corner here and you don't have to create a crease here. Again, every move that we make in origami is intentional, so you don't want to you don't want to add an extra fold if you don't have to. Okay, so we have that fold. Now we're going to be taking the top side this top portion here of that back side and we're going to be doing the same thing it's a little bit easier if you flip the you know if you flip it over backwards so you can see yourself doing that fold again so just bringing it i'll just do it backwards so you can see it but you're just bringing that piece of paper all the way to the center just like that and then you're going to be doing that all over again okay so now you have that fold right there. So then you created a little corner fold just there. So now what you want to do actually is you're going to be, we're going to lay it this way. You're going to be taking your paper and you're going to be folding it into itself. So this is, you're going to be folding it not, not this way, but this way. You're folding it into itself. You're going to be taking that sheet and turning it into like a triangle shape like this. And this is going to raise up naturally because you made that fold there, just like this. Okay. And so now what you want to do is you want to pinch that down a bit. Like that. Make sure it's lined up. And now what you did is you've created your dinosaur neck, your dinosaur neck, and your dinosaur arms. <laughs> and you have a dinosaur tail here. So now what you want to do is you want to make your dinosaur head. So we're going to be taking this tip here, and we're actually going to be folding it over itself. And we're going to be folding it where it lines up with these arms right here. So we're going to go that way, just like that. And you want to make it really nice and creased. So we're going to be doing that again. Just go over that fold again on the other side, just like this. Where can I find the link to donate to the prom fund? The link to donate on the prom fund is actually on the bottom, is on the bottom of the screen here. So you should be able to see it right then and um, always on the bottom here. And so you just click that and you'll be able to donate to our fund. I remember this is, you know, this is a fundraiser for, you know, high school students. So now we have that fold here. So what you want to do now is you're going to open this up. You're just going to open this sheet of paper up like this. And you're actually going to push that piece of paper forward just like that. So it was like this earlier. So you're just going to push it forward really easily just like that. And then you're going to fold that all over again. You're going to squeeze that back into itself, and you're going to have a face like that. So this is a little bit too pointy for our dinosaur face, but it's pretty close. So now what we want to do is we're going to do another fold here at the nose. We'll call this the nose, and then we're just going to fold it in like that. 
to make a little fold there. And then we're going to do that again on the other side to create that crease. And then just like before, we're going to open this up. And we're going to open up our dinosaur face up and we're going to push that down just like that. And then this will be able to just tuck into the face. And when you fold it over, it creates a nice little rounded dinosaur face like that. Okay. So now we have our little dinosaur face, neck, and arms that we need to create the hands. So now what you want to do is you have these little, this little triangle here. All you want to do is push your dinosaur hands down. So you're going to be creating a little diamond here. And you don't want to create like a full diamond. You want to create like a kind of a, like a not so perfect diamond because you want to, you want a little bit of paper, well, a little bit of paper sticking out so that <laughs> you can create these little tiny dinosaur hands. So when you have like a good amount of paper sticking out, all you have to do is just squeeze that together and you have created your little dinosaur hands, just like that. Okay. So last thing we have to do is create our legs. So we have these three pieces of paper here because of our dinosaur tail, like for our dinosaur tail. We have one leg, two leg, and a tail. So now all you want to do is you're going to be taking one side and you're going to be folding it forward. It's kind of hard for me to see. And you don't want it to touch that fold. You want to give it some space. And you're going to just push that downwards like that. Okay? Just like that. And then on the other side, you're going to do the same thing. And just line them up. All right, so we're pretty close. You guys, all we have to do is really finish the feet, and then I'll show you how to make sure that he stays 3D, or she, she or he, gender-neutral dinosaur. <laughs> so now all you have to do is fold this foot back. So we're going to create, like, a little angle here by folding just this foot back here. There's not really a precise um, fold, just kind of however long you want your dinosaur's legs to be. You just do that both sides like that. Okay, so it's pretty simple. You just fold that sh that triangle, that tip backwards. So the dinosaur's feet is facing the wrong way. And then what you wanna do is you're going to be taking that piece of paper, that little tip there, and you're going to be flipping it over itself. So you create a double fold, just like that. And then you're gonna do that on the other side. Okay, and so now you have your little dinosaur feet. And then to make sure that this guy stands, because it doesn't really stand really well right now, what we do is we're going to go into the dinosaur belly, right here, the dinosaur belly, and we're going to fold a little triangle on the inside of this belly. And then we will do it on both sides like that. And what you can do is you can just feed it into itself. So you just like weave that into itself. And then you will just push that with your nail or your finger inwards. You just push it inwards, just like this. And then you squeeze that piece of paper together really tight, like really, really tightly. And now it should pretty much lock in place if you just do it where it does, just like that. <laughs> just keep on trying, you guys. I know we're a little bit out of time, so, you know, that's the last part is all you have to do is really get the belly to kind of stay together, and you can use glue here, and there you go. You have created a dinosaur that pretty much is 3D. And so just to recap, you guys, we did the dinosaur and we did the heart. Thank you so much for joining me on my soul workshop for paper arts. You can always follow along with more arts and crafts stuff that I do at Little Epic Design. We're planning on doing, um, you know, we, we can plan on doing more of these if you really like them. You can check out more of the stuff that I make on our Instagram or on our Facebook. Um, and thank you so much for donating if you did and for attending this class. It's really, really fun. And, um, you know, stay safe, you guys. Bye.
Social words, 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 yeah, yeah, S words, S words, everyone put their hands, you know it's a vibe, they're waiting in line to get up and flood up the stands, yeah, we in this together, we feeling like fam, it's all about peace, so pull up with friends, you better come through with you and your crew, cause everybody going in, S words, so we keep it lit, you can see how we move the city from the west side to the east, ooh, you can feel it how we leave, through. it's all about the youth, uh, change the world through the tunes, uh, make the world to a better place, and S works, what we do, eh. social works, work, social works, work, social Works, work, social, hey. social, works, work, social, works, work, social, works. She. Social, works, keep my family out the dirt. This organization, we stopping, no Satan and open, my we call it works. Action on a tailor, the killer verse. I do on my film, my city hurt. They killing my babies, this world going crazy. I pray for my city to reimburse. Run the schools for the kiddies. Where the city at, we need it. All I know is it's work. With the heart, keep it busy. Tricky, but please just let me finish. Let me just be a witness. S works, handle bitch. Social works, social works, social works, social social works, social works, social works. Ready you not, here we come. South side, west side, east side, north side. Up on the run, we ain't for the numb. We came in the party, we in for the fun. Celebrate life, the party we young. Tag is the limit, we looking above. We up in the sun. No matter what, we stay on the run. Ha, ass work, do your thing. Ass work, keep it lit. Uh, Bulls out, keep your aim. Yeah, yeah, we up on the jib. Uh, north side, that's the way. Uh, ready you not, here we come. Uh, ass work, keep the energy. Look, yeah, we never unplug. Uh, ass work, show some love. Social works, social 